Hey guys, welcome to the HTC Recharge Tournament. Uh, got your your host here, Kruparian. Whoa, I'm sure you guys are super surprised to see me on this channel. And I'm joined here by uh, Nimsh, and we're going to have a pretty sick two-day tournament for you guys. Um, we got 16 players playing for a 5K, and um, we're going to go over and see every single player play today. We're basically going to go from 16 down to 8. How you doing, Nimsh? Want to want to go over some of the other rules and stuff? What are we going uh, sure. to have good, for man. the guys? And uh, happy to be here with you on your channel. So um, yeah. with the rules, as you said, 16 players down to 8. Uh, players will be playing best of 5 Conquest. So uh, right. a pretty good format there. And um, what else? Single elimination, so as, as we said. And um, basically, this time we also have four qualified players. So last time, last H HTC first tournament, we had only invi invites. But the community wanted to have qualifiers, so we actually had qualifiers. And uh, now we have four players who qualify. Yeah. Um, and some of the players we're going to see right away, in fact, uh, we're going to see Ecop versus Bunny Muffins in our opening uh, in our opening game. And some of these players are pretty unknown. This, I believe, this tournament, uh, the qualifier was announced a little bit over a week ago, so they did play pretty recently. Uh, and that's pretty important because sometimes tournaments have qualifiers that are like way before the actual tournament. But you know, a week ago to now, I don't think much has really changed in the Hearthstone game. So probably the players who qualified are. Um, you know, quite adept to the game as it is in its current state. And uh, that's going to be a pretty good thing. I definitely have to agree. Like, um, those guys basically play in a lot of qualifiers. And the first qualifier, as you mentioned, is, is Bunny Muffins. Like, Bunny Muffins is no random. Like, this guy played mm -hmm. in many tournaments before. He was at Gfinity. I, I met him there. He's from New York. And uh, he's actually uh, doing some work for Temple Storm as well. Like, he's uh, yep. writing some articles. So, um, a, pretty, a pretty good player. And uh, he will be facing Ecop from Cloud9. And uh, well, Ecop lost uh, round one last tournament, so we, he has to step up his game, and maybe this time he will take it. Maybe. Um, just so you guys know, this is uh, HTC's tournament. That's why we're on phones, and the players are on phones, and everything's on a phone because uh, well, HTC is is uh, you know pumping it up. They're trying to make tournaments happen, so you guys should check out what they got for you guys. Uh, for this tournament, we're doing a, a special promotion, $50 off the phone purchase. And uh, if you're interested in that, you guys can check the description for that. We do have that there. Um, and uh, well, let's let's look at the bracket here. Um, let's uh, let's have a look at what the matchups on the first day will look like. We will get to see, uh, again, all of the players uh, play today. Um, uh, kicking off with, uh, with Ecop versus Bunny Muffins coming up here in a second. Uh, I don't actually see the bracket on my end. It's all right. It's all right. I got I got the old school bracket. Um, so I believe it's going to be Trump versus Life Coach, uh, Nerea versus um, what was the second qualifier, which is going to be, I believe, Ashadia. I think Life Coach will be playing versus Trump. Actually, maybe we yep. have. Yep, that's it. So Trump oh, versus okay, Life okay. Coach, Nerea versus the second open qualifier, which I believe is uh, Ashadia. Uh, and then we'll have Tides Time versus Orange, I believe. And then Show versus Gara. And Zelly will be playing the third open qualifier, which is probably going to be Kolemoen. Kolemoen, yes. And we have, yep. uh, by the way, we don't have Orange, we don't have Tides of Time. We actually will have Purple Drunk versus Dog. So uh, uh, oh, Okay, this is a little list. bit updated. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No problem. All right. It All got right. updated like uh, minutes ago. So basically, yeah. Um, We've mentioned most of them, right? Like Sean and Gara as well. Strife Crew versus Lothar, that's a pretty interesting match. Um, team captain for Nihilum versus Strife Crew from Club Nine. Those yeah. guys have a couple, a bit of a history bef um, in front of them in the past, and um, they played many times before. And I'm not sure what the score is now, but Lothar was actually winning versus Strife Crew many times. So hopefully, Strife Crew will actually take down Lothar. But if Lothar wins versus Strife Crew, I will not be surprised here. Yeah, uh, and uh, the idea is to pin the HTC players versus the non-HTC players to see if them having an HTC phone makes a difference in their outcome in Hearthstone games. What do you think? How, how big of a factor is that when it comes to Hearthstone? Well, um, I personally use my HTC to play a lot of Hearthstone. Uh, I play on PC and then when I go to rest and uh, not play some Hearthstone, I basically just take my phone and play Hearthstone. So okay. it might actually make a difference. I think like HTC won at the, in the first tournament. We had most of the time we had a 50-50 split. Like they won eight players um, 
got eliminated and there was like half HTC players, half non-HTC players. Mm -hmm. And in the final, we had HTC player versus non-HTC player. Whoa, Force and took dream. it. Yeah, kind of the, like a dream, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, this time, uh, we'll see like who, who is actually on top. Uh, obviously, Forsen is our previous champion coming back mm -hmm. into this tournament again. And uh, I'm really curious to see if he will succeed again or is he going to go zero Forsen and, you know, get eliminated. Yeah, Forsen uh, is a pretty interesting dude, of course. Um, in terms of tournament success, you know, he kind of kicked off his streaming career with, with some pretty decent tournament success at the very, the very start of the game. Um, but not really much for a while. But recently, he's actually been kicking ass, hasn't he? Yeah, I think like, you know, he's streaming so much, he's playing so much. Also, uh, after this, this stream, he's tryharding. Like, a lot of people call him a role player, but actually he is very good at the game still. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, he, he had a lot of success with qualifiers, with pinnacle tournaments, and he finally grabbed his uh, first win at, at HTC. Uh, so if he is actually sober today, and uh, if he practiced a bit, he might win again. Well, are you, are you rooting for him? You th like, usually <clears throat> usually the returning champion doesn't win, like, any event that I know of. Has, has like, someone re, like, taken the title for the second time in any tournament that you've ever seen? So, uh, there was Firebat, and I think Firebat might be the only guy. He won Gfinity 1 and he won Gfinity 2, but... Uh, okay. Uh, you are basically right, except for Firebat. So the, they will, I think Tice, uh, Tice um, NL from Nihilum was really close to taking a back-to-back -back DreamHack win because he won DreamHack Bucharest, mm -hmm. and then DreamHack Winter he was second. He lost to Colento in the final. Yeah, yeah. it is. Okay. It is tough. It is. It is pretty tough. Um, also, I just want to just throw that out there. I actually, I actually went to my first Fireside here in Toronto. I cast cast on this channel um, like a bit over a week ago. And for that tournament, like everyone was playing against each other in the tournament on their phone. Like that was that was such a crazy thing for me because I didn't think like I knew people use their phone for stuff. I knew you could play Hearthstone on your phone, but I didn't know it was to that degree where when you'd go to a tournament, you just play your opponent on your phone every time. And uh, you know, people were telling me it's like you know they do this for like every game these days. Like they even said like on on like League of Legends tournaments or like other games, that kind of stuff. They'd play on like their tablets or devices. You know, everyone everyone like refuses to bring their computers to to these type of gatherings, these type of tournaments these days. So it's it's quite a cultural shift. Um, one that staying indoors, uh, for me, I haven't really seen it. So it's, it's pretty interesting to see that first glimpse. Well, I recently I've seen a guy having a desktop and a, and a big display in uh, Starbucks, but... Uh... Mm -hmm. That was like an original thing, so he actually brought that to Starbucks. But mostly, I do agree. Like most of the people, they they play on mobile phones, and I personally enjoy it. Like I would love to see a DreamHack tournament with open Swiss, like 500 people playing Hearthstone on their phones, and it's uh, much easier than you know getting 500 desktops mm -hmm. and people matching up. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, we are ready to get into our uh, our game here. Again, it's Ecop versus Bunny Muffins. We have we have the classes that they have available to them. It's again, it's a conquest format, best of five, and there are no bans. So all the classes that we're reading out to you guys are the ones that are going to be played. Are the ones that are going to have to win uh, one game apiece. Ecop to the tournament brought Hunter and Warrior, as did Bunny Muffins, but Ecop brought Warlock, while Bunny Muffins brought Paladin. And that's a little bit of an unusual decision. What do you think about that? Um, yeah, I mean, Paladin right now has a second build. Like, we mostly knew the um, mid-range Paladin, but you can also play uh, aggro, like super aggro. Mm -hmm. Bunny Muffins, uh, I'm not sure which build he's bringing, but Paladin is definitely a viable deck. Um, on the other hand, he's losing the Warlock that Eco brought, and Ic uh, I think Warlock is one of the strongest classes right now with so many variables, like Zoo, uh, Maligos Warlock, Handlock. So yeah. This might be, like, overall, I think Warlock is stronger, but let's, like, Absolutely. look at the lineups. Like, it really depends what they bring. Uh, what is the Hunter? Is it Midrange? Is it Face Hunter? And also Warrior, is it Control? Is it uh, Green Patron? Like, Face Hunter is good versus Green Patron mm -hmm. if Eco brought that, but Eco recently played uh, a lot of Control Warrior as well. Okay. Well, we're getting to the game here. Um, what do you think about Paladin? Like, you're saying it depends on what, what, type, it, uh, what type he brings, but... All I've really seen in recent tournaments is what people refer to as the Eboladin. It's the yeah. divine favor paladin with a lot of uh, very aggressive one drops. 
I think it's amazing. Uh, this deck is back because, as you said, Divine Favor, uh, which uh, favors um, game um, against combo decks. And a lot of combo decks like Green Page and like War uh, Warlock, they want to draw as many cards as possible. So Divine Favor gives you the, the fuel to win. And I think the deck is good. Like I played it on ladder and um, with some success, it might be a random, a bit random sometimes in RNG based, but overall, if you know how, if you know how to count damage, it can be very good versus most of the popular decks. How how does it really work? Oh, that's that's a leopard gnome. We kind of know what that is. Uh, how does it really work against um, like uh, handlock? Like you did mention, they do get a lot of cards. So your divine favor is effective, but how do you actually get through the huge taunt walls? Um, some of the builds they play uh, equality. So you either go like you're so aggressive uh, that you close your eyes, you think like there are no molten giants, and you you have to assume there are no molten giants and just just mm -hmm. kill them before they stabilize. And even if there are Molten Giants, you mostly have some minions on board and you just equality, you go through, finish them with Hammer of Wrath. You have you have a lot of reaches this deck. Like sometimes you even have like a 9-9 nine, nine Argent Squire with Divine Shield. And you just... Yeah, I haven't quite seen the 9-9 nine, nine version, but I've seen the 5-5 five, five, and I imagine the 9-9 nine, is a little bit more threatening unless you have a Silence in your hand. True. Um, so here we have uh, what seems to be a very uh, typical, so far, mid-range hunter from Ecop, bringing that old school river croc into a uh, Houndmaster tech. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That actually it. used to be a thing uh, before yeah. before Haunted Creeper. River croc was the best two-drop beast. Yeah, and it's actually pretty lucky that he got that river croc crocolisk here with the coin and Houndmaster in his hand. Uh, but definitely, I, I like the Midrange Hunter. Uh, we, for some time, we were seeing the hybrid with more aggression and the high mains, but I like the fact that Midrange Hunter is, is back. Uh, setting up the, those big taunts can stop the aggression. And here, uh, he has a nice trade. Does he really need to unleash? Um, I feel like the Coin Houndmaster is pretty good. Um, I think like when when you're seeing like an Ebola Paladin play nothing for so many turns, like. That's kind of nothing. Like there's two dudes there, right? Yeah. But you have you have to assume he has like a, a divine favor or like a huge charge combo. Um, I think or is like, he playing around kings mostly. It's like you might want to have Han Master for later. I think mm -hmm. Han Master play was also good, but then with this he will be able to play high main, um, maybe on five if he wants to, and at some point he will be able to Han Master high main. But. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think at this stage in the game, Ecop has very, very clearly realized that his opponent has a terrible draw. <laughs> like, yeah. There's just, there's just no other explanation for it. And how does, how does this play out? Like uh, mid range hunter versus Ebolid, and I feel like the the paladin might have an edge, as uh, most of the decks that are faster than the mid range hunter tend to beat it, from what I've seen. But with yeah. a bad hand, does it really, does it really make much of a difference? Um, I, I think I agree that. Um... The, the Paladin has an edge here uh, with uh, so many aggressive minions and the silence in hand as well. So normally this matchup should be good, even though like no, uh, there is a Freezing Trap. Freezing Trap is not doing that much against this deck uh, where you have a lot of small minions. Like even if you have the charge, you can just play it um, for another turn. Uh, so it will be it will be tough. Like Ecop will need to kill the minions and also try to find the way to deal damage. And with mm -hmm. the Divine Favor, Bunny Muffins has a way to um, replenish his hand. And this draw yeah, is not that terrible. Does he really? That's that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like divine favor is, is really good a lot of the time, but when it's when it's not good, it's absolutely terrible. Like, and this this seems like it may be one of those games. Um, like the, the face hit there, thinking. face and face is going to be like, wow. Yeah, at this point, he might not even need it. There's like Ecop is already at thirteen. And he has Arcan Golem and Divine Favor. Like, look at this. He just plays the cards next turn, and he'll be able to draw at least two, three cards for for free mana. Ecop needs to mm -hmm. stabilize. Um, I wonder if the silence was needed that early because Bunny Muffins, instead of going for face, he's playing kind of like a control game. As much as this Paladin can control the board, because that high yeah. main might be really tough to go through after the taunts. I mean, I think the the idea was that, oh my god, that's a Leroy. That's a lot of damage. But still, Eco might have a chance to stabilize. Bunny Muffins will have to draw something to deal with the yeah. high taunted. 
I think the idea was that uh, he didn't expect his uh, 6-5 uh, deck hand to die to the kill command, and he was hoping that the high might have to trade into it, and you really didn't want to deal with the 2-2s. Two you can a lot of a lot of damage. Um stopping the, the minions with Freezing Trap as well. So it seems like Ecop is setting up lethal for next turn, right? This will be 7, 15, 23, and a hero power. Not quite. Uh, next turn he will be able to kill if the... If the yeah, with, with the 8, yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's right. One over lethal. So yeah. is there anything Bunny Muffins can actually draw here? Um... Yeah, I feel like an abusive sergeant if the dagger hits face, right? You do juggler, Leroy, and then the dagger hits the high main, Leroy trades in, and then the abusive plus two on the arcane golem. Oh, no, he's got freeze trap up. That, no. That's the freezing trap, yeah. Yeah, the freeze trap stops it. He would need a charge and a silence. So uh, he needs to kill the high main now. Two, five. Well, he, I don't think he dies exactly if uh, Leroy kills the high main, right? Uh, without the high main, now the snake trap, there is even more damage. It's 6, 10, 12. Yeah, yeah, if the high main dies, that would be good, but can Leroy kill the high main? Yeah, it's based on the, the juggling. You can put up the Leroy after the juggler and the deck hand for the extra try. So it's uh, two tries at a 1 in 6, maybe a 1 in 5 to follow. Oh, this can't be good. With this, is he? He's dead on board. I yeah, he just so. loses to the. He just loses to the high main and the hero power. Well, oh, he almost killed the uh, the hound master. Yeah, almost. That would, maybe that would give him another turn. But you were absolutely right. The um, the call to save the hound master really saved Ecop. While earlier on, it may have just died to kings or. Or gotten silenced off, uh, and that probably would have cost them the game, as the uh, the Ebola Paladin had quite a few chargers, quite a few aggressive cards to lead into after the Divine Favor. So uh, yeah, really good call by Ecop, uh, and really good call by you. Uh, we have the Hunter taking a win from Ecop. Ecop has to uh, win a game still with uh, Warlock and Warrior, um, and we were talking about how both these decks kind of struggle because they have to often lead into multiple uh, card hands to win the game while the uh, Divine Favor punishes that. So I don't think the Paladin will have too much trouble taking a win in this series. Paladin might might be in trouble if the Warlock It is Zoo. Here. Um, because Paladin is really bad versus Patron. Like, Patron is like anti-deck with all the whirlwind effects, clears, mm. uh, armor smith. So if Warlock wins here, then, uh, and Ecop is running Patron, Bunny Muffins might be in trouble. Mm -hmm. And this is Zoo. I love this deck. I played it a lot recently. Yeah, is the Doctor Boom standard in Zoo, or is that more like a Demon Lock type of thing? Uh, I think it's standard. Like, basically you play Doctor Boom Alganius as your end game, and the only things that change is some some people play Double Bane of Doom, some people play Double Mortal Coil, one Void Terror, and some people play Haunted Creepers and instead of Coils, uh, Double Void Terror, and one Bane of Doom. So those, those, player, uh, those cards are flexible. But other than that, uh, I think Boom is staple. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty happy with how uh, Void Terror ends up working. I think, uh, I think I'd go with a double Void Terror variation. Uh, I think a lot of the time people uh, like are a bit too conservative with Power, Power of the Wild. Uh, um, Overwhelming. Overwhelming. From what I've seen, um, they just kind of want to use it as a finisher, and I kind of understand that. But it feels like you can get so much value, um, just. Powerwhelming like almost anything. Obviously, ideally an egg, but yeah. basically anything, and just getting uh, you know one huge void terror on the board. It's yeah, it's definitely an amazing thing to have on board. But what I specifically love is a void caller on on turn seven, void caller into void terror, and you get a, a huge void terror, and you summon a doomguard or Malganis. Yeah. All right, so uh, here. There is Doomguard. Uh, Zoo versus Hunter is basically um, in favor of Hunter. Hunter has a, has a good matchup mm -hmm. because um, there is Unleash the Hounds, there is Explosive Trap. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if Money Muffins is running Explosive, but Snake is also good versus versus Zoo. But if Zoo is fast enough, maybe Ika will be able to just steal 
uh, the game from Bunny Muffins. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I, I cast a tournament yesterday where some of the mid-range hunter were running Explosive Trap, and we thought that was fairly unusual because if you're playing mid-range, you're kind of always battling for the board, and that makes uh, Explosive Trap kind of awkward. Uh, Explosive Trap really fits like the the face gameplay. Uh, what do you think the role of that card is in in like a mid mid range hunter deck? It just so, seems a bit awkward. I, I'm personally running double freezing one explosive, and the rule is that if you run double med scientists, you want to have free tr uh, free secrets for bigger value. And um, mm -hmm. if you are forced to play a second scientist, uh, you at least have a have a chance to get um, a different secret. And also, it stops. Um, aggro decks like it's good to have this alternative to, to, to have that one board clear one extra board clear because you're also running one unleash the hounds only so one unleash the hounds one explosive trap or maybe double unleash and no explosive traps mm -hmm. how does explosive trap play into like big uh you know the big warrior decks like the grim patrons it's terrible it's terrible well is it like, like always a liability or do they sometimes just play into it and it screws them over uh, most of the time, if there is a patron, you don't gain that much. Like you maybe mm -hmm. stop them for one turn, but there's still like a lot of patrons out. And you can really, as a patron warrior, you have weapons, so you can play around the explosive trap. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like we're going with the abusive play here. Um, it's, it's not, it's not that optimistic. You get two tries, so it's, it's a one in four chance to fail. You get the second try when the Nerubian pops out. Any summoned creature uh, tends to work. Oh, it looks like it's going to be a freeze trap though. I don't, I don't think we saw the trap, so um, so far it's the double freeze snake trap variation. Do you, think there's, do you think there's any call for um, uh, like a fourth trap, perhaps? Um, possibly. I mean, if he plays double double eagle horrible, but I would assume that there's mostly free traps. Like, you don't mm -hmm. want to have too many and, and a hunter deck. Yeah. This is a very interesting game, by the way. Like, Bunny Muffins, has, I think, has a terrible hand with the, all those secrets. He's uh, winning, though. Isn't he? he? Is. Well, Ecop like, has none of damage. Yeah, but how does he do five more? <laughs> this will still be like a board battle for those guys. Um, Ecop will, will try to build up some, some kind of board, but yeah, definitely Bunny Muffins is ahead for now. And uh, with the Snake Trap, if Ecop wants to trade, there will be even more minions on the board. Mm -hmm. All right, well, with a double trap up, if you're Ecop, you probably know something bad's about to happen here. Oh man, and a juggler as well to, to pair it with the Snake Trap. It's a pretty good setup for Bunny Muffins to go for lethal in a couple of turns. Yeah, it's just sometimes out of reach with this deck, and that, that kind of sucks. Well, the double taunt is a pretty nice play. It does buy him a few more turns, and maybe he can get uh, the damage he needs. Um, does he actually have it? If if one creature survives, he can proc the freeze, and then he can do uh, the double buff on that creature and Doom Guard on a later turn. Yeah, it's uh, it's still possible, but uh, he's definitely behind, and there was no Doomsayer from Pilot of Shredder, so I'm just thinking, like, what will be the way for Eco to come back? Normally, Zudek does not run in any AoE. You have Implosion, but still, like, Banamafis is so much damage mm -hmm. on the side, and the Freezing Trap, and the Snake Trap. Mm -hmm. Even though... Well, if, yeah, if... If uh, something can stay alive on Ecop's board, um, and he can proc the freeze trap, if he gets like an owl, and then next turn draws a power overwhelm, and then gets a miracle discard with the Doom Guard. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like if you have uh, a way to play Malganis, but he doesn't have anything, he doesn't have taunts, he'll have to be the one attacking, and uh, yeah. at this point he might even have to tap, unless he plays. Doom Guard now, but oh man, you said about snakes. Well, I guess he's trying to proc the egg, but um, snake should trigger now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought snake was played first, and I don't know if it really matters. Doesn't snake trigger anyway? It should trigger anyway because there was an attack into a creature. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, he goes for one and one here. So Doomguard is just a, a way to maybe just try to do something, and he drops Power of Warming as well. Yeah. I mean, he's a pretty desperate place. There's not really much that you can do. Okay, yeah, that's, that's an interesting Lukla. 
That was actually drawn Mukla. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, Bandit Muffins mentioned that King Mukla is his uh, favorite card. Oh, really? That's so pretty he might cool. be forcing it. But he liked that banana challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just stayed with I it. I didn't so much. You should play Web Spinners as well, and maybe Ragnaros and Nefarian, and have like full Tavern Brawl deck. Mm. All the weeks included. Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't sound so good. I think here. I mean, here they're they're trying to win some money, man. They're trying they're trying to get that 5k, um, and it's not just 5k. I mean, the um, uh, second and third place they're 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 worth something. I believe it's 5k to the winner, 2500 for second, uh, 1500 and 500 for yep. the remaining positions. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, gotta, that's, that's good money. Gotta get that monies, man. But on the other hand, you want some exposure if you're a qualified player. So maybe you want to show some decks as well, you know, yeah. interesting videos. I guess that's true. That's true. All right, guys. So uh, Ecop versus Bunny Muffins uh, looking pretty good. Both players have picked up a point. Um, Ecop has uh, yet to win with uh, Warlock and Warrior, while Bunny Muffins has yet to win with Paladin and Warrior. Um, we have seen the Paladin deck and we have seen the Warlock deck. It is uh, kind of like a Zui deck versus an uh, Eboladin. And I think yeah. the uh, the Zoo deck probably has the advantage in that match, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, have we seen Morocos? We haven't seen any Morocos. So... No, but we, we didn't see that much of the deck. He didn't get a chance to tap much of that deck. That's true. All right, so Warrior right. Mirror. This Warrior one. Mirror. And that's see Battle Rage from Ecop. So we kind of know what deck that is. Yeah, charge forward. Yeah, it, it feels like the, the only deck that uses Battle Rage for Warriors that isn't Grim Patron is Math Warrior. And why would you play that right now? It's basically like Grim Patron without the patrons. Which can win games, but why? Why would you do that? Exposure! <laughs> no, that's Exposure. Really. Oh, Cop's wow. got enough of it. So we have a mirror match, Patron versus Patron. Um, and those mm -hmm. matches are pretty intense. Like, most of the time you want to have... Deathspite on 4 and uh, Patron in Rage on 5 to have a pa green Patron board. But if you don't get that, you just want to draw as many cards as possible. And, and that's uh, sort of going second is a pretty big deal, isn't it? Yeah, like the, the first to actually play uh, Deathspite Patron will have an advantage. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and there is like nothing, normally there is nothing to deal with the, the big Patron board unless you actually have double frauding Warsong after Torison. Then you can use it to your advantage and win and steal the win. That's true, that's kind of a funny situation where you can create more minions to then further buff a frother. Yeah. Um, the also reverse like, patron. If players play Harrison Jones, that's that's also a good question. Do they? Mm. I don't believe the standard list has any legendaries. Uh, Thorison for sure, but... Uh, oh yeah, but... That, sorry. It okay. seems like not a you're legendary right, card. Right. Yeah, it's a legendary card. No, I just I just know uh, every now and then when I check for like uh, decks and stuff to see what people are playing, they have them like uh, listed by dust count, and I know the Grim Patron like clocks in at like seven hundred dust. True. Yeah, so I just know there's no like uh, pay to win legendaries in there, but sometimes... I know. Yeah, sometimes there's Grom, sometimes there's uh, Harrison, as you mentioned. Yeah. Is there any others? Uh, I don't think so, like mostly those two, because sometimes people want to have Grimash for extra burst and um, Harrison is against those warriors rogues. Depends on the metagame. I think a ladder is fine. Here in the Conquest format, I'm not sure if mm -hmm. it's good to have Harrison. But uh, for Ecop, right now, he doesn't really have anything. Like, he has the Death Spite, which is great, but he doesn't have Warsong, he doesn't have Patron, and he has no more draw. And uh, Bunny Muffins, I think he has a lot of draw, he has Torison. And Thorison is going to hit Warsong at least, so some combo parts are there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty big hand there from uh, Bunny Muffins. Ecop has like uh, some kind of like super burst with Frothing, but he needs a lot more pieces right now. He needs Warsong, basically. Uh, but out in that. Is that enough? Well, Warsong will give him a chance because right now he doesn't have anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you would get uh, like a Battle Rage. I think Battle Rage would be the best draw here. Um, just, you just need cards. You just need yeah. to respond to, to the situation. Okay. Um, well, you got to get rid of that Tharson because, uh, well, you're probably dead already. 
because he has a bigger hand and he already played Tharson. But uh, you got to remove it off the board so you have uh, some chance this game. Yeah. You might... Hmm. You might actually execute it. Like, if you if you draw into Patron, if you're lucky enough, you will have so many wound effects that you just... You will build up the board. Uh, Armorsmith is not doing that much for you at the moment, and you don't want to use Death Sprite. So I think execute is fine. Uh, oh, if... So he's des he might be desperate enough to actually go into throwing, but I don't think that's good. Like, if there is an execute, it will stop him, and he has nothing else. Well, what, what if you do both? What if you do the sack the Armorsmith play and the Frothing, so there's no execute trigger on the Frothing? Uh, but then, like, a Death Spite will kill Frothing. Like, I, I would not throw Frothing away. And if he goes mm -hmm. Frothing, uh, Stable Gold, that would be too much of a yellow play. Oh, man. The Patron is here. So we have a, a one-mana Cruel Task. We have a zero-mana Whirlwind. Um, well, he works on Commander. He cannot Patron, though. Looks like he's just making another drop play. Interesting. Um, so he's not respecting weapons and not, not respecting that war song. Um, he just wants to draw more cards. Man, everyone's getting in here in the hand. <laughs> yeah. Well, those are the two dwarves he has in the deck, so for now it's it's enough. But uh, Ecop now, can he remove the war song? Uh, he certainly can. Do you think uh, that's worth it though? Even though you draw a lot of cards, you I mean you burn a two mana Warsong commander. I think you have to remove the the Warsong. You can Whirlwind Taskmaster in a rage on Oh for it. sure, for sure, from Ecop side of the board. But I was curious from Bunny Muffins, like do you think that play was actually worth it? No, I think it was it wasn't worth it. You basically should keep the Warsong um mm -hmm. to be able because he has the Whirlwind, he has those cards as he said. So he should be able to, to build up. Like right now he will be focusing on just building the board, which is also good. I mean, he did bait out removal. So this turn he will be able to play those patrons with Whirlwind. But is there anything else? Like he can he has only one Whirlwind effect. He has unstable goal, but no way to kill it at the moment. Yeah. I mean I don't know. I mean when when I saw the play it seems like it's not worth it, but when you look at the outcome it seems kind of worth it, because uh, Ecop just had to burn like all those cards to, to deal with it. Uh, not only did that ruin his combo, but that really ruins his ability to remove a similar board once it's played again. And of course it's going to be played again pretty soon. Now the question is, do you go for Patron Whirlwind's play? You might not want to yet. You might want to continue drawing cards. Uh, for Bunny Muffins, it's also important that he has no damage. Um, for now, so he uses fireworks, he'll get the damage for Battle Rage. Uh, there is a Death Spite, so Death Spite is a pretty good pickup, but he, is he looking for another War Song now after burning the first one? Yeah, it's just that in, in some situations you don't really need it, right? Like we were talking about how the wind condition is just to set up a uh, Grim Patron board. It seems like, uh, you know, classes that don't have very good ways to remove uh, patrons, you can just you can just play them. There is a patron now, by the way, so he might go for nope. this. Okay, he's not going for it this turn. But uh, that's at least something for Ecop now. Like, he will be able to respond. I think going for patron this turn, you'll get just three patrons. Okay, it wasn't that good. Nope. Not too good. Just slam pass mostly. All right, well, Bunny Muffins, uh, you know, he's going in here, man. He's got a patron to burn. I mean, why not, right? Well, you have to at some point, right? Like you need to play yeah. those patrons. Like both players were playing really passive till now, and uh, Bunny Muffins is the first one to pull the trigger. Okay, so we're probably gonna see a yeah, whirlwind battle rage here just to uh, draw the four cards. That's more cards, cool. man. Can he draw into War Song? We see so many cards. But still, like I feel like this this match never really. I have never seen this match go into fatigue. Like when you draw your deck, you have some way of killing your opponent. Like we've all seen the, you know, you have two taunts up and you have like sixty life and then you die in one turn from no board, right? Yeah. So this this never goes to fatigue, does it? That yeah, it never goes to fatigue. Oh man, execute is uh, is pretty nice. He will be able to execute one of the dwarves, but. 
Yeah, this is awkward for Ikov. Bikov is playing from behind. He's doing what he can, but without the Warson Commander, he will be in trouble here. No good way to, to have um, a throwing win. And uh, Bunny Muffin's still at 30. So how I think that this game will just go out is Bunny Muffins is going to take over the board or just go for phase and, and win. What about execute on the ghoul? Just enrage another patron and execute the ghoul. You basically give your opponent two more patrons and they Yeah, but then you, you nullify one of his, so he essentially has three while you have five. Uh, that patron was a free two. Yeah, so it can't spawn another one. With when you execute the ghoul um, at three two, ghoul deals the one damage, so bunny muffins would get two more patrons. Yeah, but you get three. You yeah, you do, you do. Um, and you you kill the two one, and I don't know. It didn't seem that bad. Well, well, man, what, what, seems, attack, so that, that what seems bad is is like the massive hand that Bunny Muffins has acquired here. Like, is that ten cards? That's ten cards. That's, that's ten cards. Yes. Wow. Without War Song, I don't think he can find Lethal. So what he might want to do here is oh, he's going for the Ghoul. Interesting. Man, everyone's getting in here. This. This turn is going to rope. Oh yeah. It might actually be too late. It feels like things have not moved fast enough. It feels like there's some potential for like a massive screw up here that will uh, lead to Ecos doing okay. He needs to kill all the all the patrons, and I think that's that's definitely possible. Yeah, that's by the attack. Did uh, I think we saw a whirlwind. Was that a whirlwind? No, 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 I don't think so. Was the wound? He should... He's hovering over it, okay. Alright, well, Ecop has some chance here with Battle Rage. Yeah, but Frodding doesn't have charge, and he's giving even more patrons to his opponent. Like, patrons are so tough to deal with. Well, um, is he really? Like, th three more? It's not, it's not that big of a deal. How much oh, two more. One, one dies. Yeah, yeah one there's only dies. two more. And Six out of patrons. all the cards yeah. he's drawn, there's there's no Warsong in there for uh, for Bunny Muffins. There's a Warsong for Ecop. But he can attack only with one patron and doesn't change much. He can play Warsong and slam one of his minions, but it's not doing to change anything. So Ecop is fighting not to die here. Mm -hmm. How much damage is there for Bunny Muffins? This is 6, uh, 12, 15, 19 with the weapon. No He's charge. Got no charges. Nope. He can't get it. He can probably clear this board and gain a lot of armor doing it, though. He's not that concerned about armor, but he might have. Uh, I, I, I would not hate playing one frotting here before clearing. At this point, you, you might think, like, hey, um, there is not much that Ecop can do. Ecop has only three cards in his hand. So he's definitely clearing, and then using his um, frauding, uh, like um, Death Spite, to get even more patrons, and that will probably probably be, be it. Looks like he uh, he's kind of wanting some of that armor. He's a bit indecisive, and I feel like uh, maybe a bit better off playing this earlier. Yeah, kind of, kind of like a misplay, or unless no, he he could have played it earlier. He basically didn't have the plan uh, before he started trading. Yeah. Yeah, still, I mean, people say uh, Grim Patient Warrior is a very complicated deck. I mean, we say that all the time with even, uh, you know, tournament level players making misplays, getting roped. It just, there's just so many combinations, so many possibilities, and so long on the animations. That's true, and it's so so really easy to misplay. Just You just miss to damage somewhere, and uh, suddenly you miss lethal. Torison is like a slap to the face for Ico. But is there was there really anything he could draw here? With this with this board with patrons, like you can't do much. Uh Burwin doesn't clear it. He might be playing one brawl, but I don't think so. Brawl is making Well he has to draw, because right now he's just dead to the board, so he has to try to get another option. That doesn't look like another option. Nope. 
It isn't. An ECOP goes down. Uh, Bunny Muffins, after losing the first game, has taken the next two, and he is on match point. Ecop has uh, yet to win with his Warrior and his Warlock, while Bunny Muffins, he's just got the Paladin. Um, so you were saying how uh, the Paladin actually doesn't do so well against Grim Patron, and I don't think it does so well against uh, the Zoo. Um, Ecop still so, has a chance. Yeah, it's okay. Who would you prefer to be? Would you prefer to be like with two favored decks or with uh, just one win to go with the Bulletin? I would prefer to be Bunny Muffins at this point. Uh, because yeah. even though you don't have that good of a matchup versus Patron and versus Warlock, um, mm -hmm. this deck is a really heavy aggro deck and you can steal the win. Uh, if you get a good opening and uh, somehow Patron never never gets the Whirlwinds, never gets Armor Smith, you might just be able to just go through them and take that 30% or how, however much you have in the matchup mm -hmm. to win the, the thing. And you have two chances to do that. I'm also curious, um, how would you judge like uh, Bunny Muffin's play? Like we, we saw a few misplays, like a few points of missed armor here and there, but I think if you really scrutinize any Grim Patron game played by anybody, there's probably a little bit of that. Um, but we, uh, we both kind of disagreed with the burning combo pieces to draw cards, but it feels like that's why he won. Um, yeah, I mean, card draw is important, and I think in Patreon, you, because it's a combo deck, there is no one uh, clear way to, pl to play it. Uh, everybody has his own style, and also you can show the style through um, the card choices you have. So here, I would probably not do it, but I think that was a legit choice uh, that he took the line. Uh, he basically played it a bit differently than, let's say, Show or other players, and he won, so he's in the right in the end. Yeah, well, I don't know. Like, uh, it's it's Hearthstone. Winning with a strategy doesn't necessarily validate the strategy. <laughs> All right, I agree. The well, Ecop had a terrible hand, so maybe that actually helps Bunny Muffins. Yeah, there. yeah. But it wasn't terrible. Like, it, it was no, it was it was interesting. It just seemed a little weird. Generally, the you know people see the Grim Patron deck as fairly one-dimensional. You get cards, you combo, you win. So comboing to get cards seems kind of you know, unusual, but uh, yeah, it, it it seemed pretty good the next turn, and I think that's really a better judge of the situation than winning. So here we are. Um, we have the Grim Patron Warrior again from Ecop, and the Ebolodin again from Bunny Muffins. Now you're saying how a good hand tends to win the game. This looks like a pretty good hand from the Ebolodin. I mean, what what isn't there in that hand that you might that you might want in this matchup? second mini bot <laughs> but overall i agree this is the the perfect opening coin mini bots into juggler into master for battle and then you still have the divine favor to replenish your hand and what ecop is missing are the weapons so ecop will need he has the slam for juggler so at least that's something but overall he will be defending uh all the time oh wow harrison jones works good versus master oh so, um, yeah, it seems like uh, the Harrison Jones probably should have put Ecop favored in the in the mirror as, while it may have been in, in Bunny Muffin's deck, it, it seems like it's not a certainty. And he did draw a lot of the deck, so it seems quite quite unlikely, in fact. Uh, by the way, an interesting play from Ecop with Frotting on free. Uh, against aggro decks, against Hunter, against this uh, Ebola, you can actually play Frotting earlier. You're not keeping it as a combo card, you can play it as a minion that's going to fight back. Especially because Ecop doesn't have the wound effect still. Yeah, it's it's because the the Grim Patron is just impossible to remove with uh, with these uh, you know heavy small minion type of decks. So I mean, all you really need is that you need a Grim Patron to stick in its game. Yeah, but then like you need charge as well, unless you have a really good like uh, Death Spite and in the rage. Mm. You, you can't just play to two patrons and hope that they will not not die. Um, you have to be mindful of the True Silver Champion. Okay. So now is the interesting part. Do you Harrison for two cards, or do you go for uh, like a more control play with the Slam? I think I would, I would think about slamming. But if you Slam, uh, you you can only armor up. Yeah. And then the Harrison value is going down because he'll not be able to draw two cards next turn. Yeah, but if he Harrisons, it'll actually be a disaster because Divine Favor is going to land. Uh, Maybe even next turn is still pretty good. 
Yeah, but you've seen one favor, so you actually might risk it. So playing Harrison here means that he is risking that there is no second favor. Wait, have you seen one favor? I see two in the hands of Bunny Muffin. Um, I mean, one was played, right? No, I don't, no, doesn't look like it. So this is the first favor? Oh, it's not going to be here. He's, he's choosing to play uh, Muster, so he's not playing it on two mana. Um, oh, I, I've meant Muster, yeah. sorry. Yeah, Master is definitely very good here. And uh, with, with double juggler, that's a dream play. Yeah, Acop's shaking his head. He knows this is a very tough situation to come back from. Acop is on the verge of elimination, and with no whirlwinds, this might be over pretty soon. Uh, I mean, if, if he gets whirlwind, it's actually a pretty big deal. He can remove all but one juggler with the uh, whirlwind execute. Hey, that's not nice. too bad. Yeah. All right. It's not Whirlwind, but it's not too bad. It will mitigate at least four damage. If Bunny Muffins draws a, an Iron Big Owl... So he goes for the Slam. He is, he is respecting the Owl. No, actually, I, I, I think... Um, because, okay, the ghoul, the ghoul mitigates four damage. The Slam mitigates three immediately, and probably at least one or two with the Juggles, right? Yeah. So actually, actually, the slam is more effective there. Oh my god. Mukla Divine over. Favor. Holy cow. Ico was just holding his face. He knows. Man, that face must be really heavy right now. Get some support for that. Pretty tough. Yeah, that is pretty tough. There's really not much he could have done. Um, from uh, from the tech cards that uh, we, we saw revealed in this uh, in this game, uh, it seems like Ecop was uh, probably favored in the matchup with the Grim Patron, and um, it seemed like he was favored with the Warlock versus the Paladin, as the Warlock was Zoo and probably had a good matchup against it. So that's how it rolls, man. Sometimes you, you can play pretty well. Sometimes you can have uh, the better matchups, but uh, it doesn't it doesn't guarantee anything in Hearthstone. As there's, the cards come down, there's uh, there's many things that can unfold. That's true. Like we are fighting for the edge, but there is no 100% matchup. Like at best, get 80%, and mm. there's still one of five games you're going to lose, and that might be the game uh, for Bunny Muffins. Just having a great opening, uh, having good juggles. Ecop just knows that there is nothing else, and he knows that there's so much damage in Bunny Muffins' hand as well after the draw. Well, I think it's lethal, actually, isn't it? Um, with Silence Leroy. Mm, Silence Leroy will be 6, plus the weapon is 1, 7 points of damage. Um, 10, 12. Leroy is plus 1 if he hits. If he hits the face, face it's lethal. Yeah. Uh, oh. You can get through silver. No, not really. You need to silence. Um, yeah. You can have one you do... Can you do double silence into Arcane Golem and gain lethal? I think you're one short with that. Armor Smith is annoying. Yeah. But it's oh, still good. Oh. Like... Face, face. I think that's lethal. Oh, no. If he, if he went six. face, I think it would have been. Uh, no, he needed one more knife. Yeah, he needed one more knife face. One more knife face. I yeah, needed but... this knife as well. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, but he st still has the true silver. And Leper Gnome, such a great card. He can win with this. What can Ecop do against oh, the Leper Gnome? He, he, can't, he can't drop the Leper Gnome. Um, well, he has Grim Patron and the Warsong Commander, but with the Armorsmith silenced, he can't really do much else. And that is a problem. And that was an excellent silence from Bunny Muffins, because normally Patron, uh, imagine... At this, at this point, Warsong and Grim Patron, how much armor that will be. Uh, so Eco might have a chance to stabilize, but with Bunny Muffin silencing the armor smith, there is literally nothing he can do to stop the damage incoming. I mean, it's still no whirlwind. He's like, Jeez. do I even play it in my deck? Maybe he cut one for Harrison Jones. Yeah, it, it like it doesn't doesn't really matter. He needed he needed whirlwind and like a taunt or something. On the other armor smith, but wasn't it played earlier? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was in the very beginning. 
So there's like nothing you can really draw to like really up his HP more than two. Yeah. Which means he dies no matter what. Should silver Leroy. That would be that would be over for Ecob. All right. So Bunny Muffins takes the series versus Ecob, three to one. A pretty convincing win, and Ecob is eliminated from the tournament again. And oh so. man, quite a bummer for Ecob. Uh, Ecob just doesn't really end up doing too well. But you know, every time I see him play. Uh, he's bringing the right decks, he's making the right plays. Uh, never lucky rubber ducky, I guess, man. What can you do? Yeah, so this happens. Uh, so hopefully he will do well in uh, an Arkham League and other leagues he's playing. But uh, he has to say goodbye to HTC. But uh, this is not over for Cloud9. We still have Strife Crow in. But Bunny Muffins, he qualified and he is right now advancing to tomorrow. So a pretty impressive, uh, yeah. impressive win. If you guys are just tuning in, uh, we got we got the HTC tournament here for you guys. It's a 16 players, four qualified. We saw Bunny Muffins was uh, one of them. Uh, today we will see all the players play. We are going to go down from uh, 16 players down to eight, and tomorrow we will have our grand champion at the end of the stream. Uh, so it's mostly like a little bit of introduction. We get to see what people are doing. We get to see what people are playing, and um, we will see some uh, pretty good games. But tomorrow we will see some even more interesting games, as you know the players uh, would have had a chance to see what their competition is playing. And uh, yeah, there's uh, there's a lot more to think about. Uh, on the second stage of the tournament, but it being single elimination, it is a little bit brutal. Uh, but uh, well, at least it's at least it's best of five, right? Yeah, the best of five, and uh, we bring the quality players and quality wins. I believe the next match will be uh, Nairia versus Asahida. Yeah, and Asahida is another qualified uh, player. Uh, we have a little bit of information from probably from Spain. How about that? There we go. <laughs> Man, I was that's what we got for you there. guys. Doing our research. <laughs> There was, I think, one Asahida from Belgium that plays Harsten as well, but I'm not sure uh, if this is the, the player that plays in our tournament for now. Yeah, but if, if you're from Belgium, you can also probably be from Spain. Yes, if you, you can be from Spain living in Belgium. Yeah, probably. Could and be. Asahi, Asahida uh, sounds like a Japanese name. Yeah, it does. It does have that Asian tone to it. Anyway, guys, we will have that matchup for you guys pretty soon. We will need a few minutes to uh, set up. So if you guys uh, enjoy the action, hang tight, and uh, we'll only be a few minutes. We'll see you guys soon.